Hey, this is John Southurst from BitsOnline.com, where cryptocurrency and technology media meet the future. Right now, I'm sitting here with Marco Piraboom, and he's with the Decred project. Now, Decred, he called it before an altcoin. I think it's a little more than that, because what, what I've been seeing now is that uh, it's not really alternative tokens anymore. They're, they're entire self-contained projects. And we're seeing them become more than just tokens. Like, it's not just a currency that you put out there and say to people, okay, just use it somehow. <laughs> like, uh, like, say, Bitcoin. Like, it has to have some sort of platform, some reason for people to use it. So, uh, what exactly is Decred? And uh, what, what makes it stand out from all the others? So, we are a originally written uh, blockchain, so we did not fork from uh, right. anybody else's uh, code base. So, uh, Decred is an original cryptocurrency that was written from scratch. Uh, it is loosely based on, on Bitcoin. Uh, we wrote a whole bunch of Bitcoin code prior to that and we based the Decred code base off of that. So there's definitely roots uh, back going back to, to Bitcoin, but we are substantially different. So what makes Decred really uh, a different player in, in the game is that we have a voting system, uh, sorry, a, a governance system is really the way right. to put that. And what that means is that it provides you with, with a, a, a method to uh, to have dispute resolution, so you no longer are paralyzed with tough decisions. So, because you can make a decision and actually enforce it. Um, as far as I know, currently uh, in in the space, we are the only ones that actually have controlled hard fork voting on the blockchain. So, we have an agenda, and then the the people that hold Decred, the stakeholders, can vote on that agenda. Can they pass it? Uh, not pass it? And, and you know. A variety of things that they can do with that. Right. So, is Decred a, uh, a proof of work mined coin? Um, that is a fun question. Um, so, it's <laughs> actually a proof of work, proof of stake hybrid. Okay. So, and we very deliberately made that decision to go the hybrid route. And the reason for the hybrid route is that if you have purely proof of work, the miners accrue most of the power yeah. in in the system. If you have a purely proof of stake uh, mechanism, then the proof, the people that hold a lot more uh, Decred would also gather more power. Mm -hmm. So by, by hybridizing the system, what it does is it creates tension in the system. And tension is healthy because the, the miners have a different agenda than the stakeholders. And they're both right, right? So the, that's the thing to realize. The miners are right in their part of the world and the stakeholders are always right in their part of the world too. So how do you keep both in check, right? So, and that's what we tried to do with Decred and that's why we created the, the algorithm that pitched these two forces against one another and incentivizes them in a way that people will participate in both ends. Excellent. Okay, so what you said controlled hard forking and voting. I, I take it that's the same thing? Two different names for the same thing? Um, so the voting is what enables the controlled hard fork. Gotcha. So once a vote passes, so once you do the tally, then the hard fork physically happens. Right. So they are linked, but not the same thing. And how does that process work? Like, how does, how does someone initiate the uh, hard fork, and why, why would they do that? So the good good news there is that nobody initiates the hard fork. The hard fork is initiated by the network. Right. So the way it uh, mechanically works is a bunch of code is being written to fix or to add a new feature that is consensus based. So it's, it requires the network to agree to it. So that for, uh, the feature is added to the network. So then as time goes on, that feature or the, the people that are upgrading the software signal to the network that we are at a certain level of features. So you need that, right? So you need enough of the network to understand the um, uh, where we're at. And so and let's say we, at version 1.0 is when we have all these features. So but the, the network is saying we are at 1.0. That is actually when the vote is kicked off. So once 1.0 hits, it's like, okay, now we're ready. So now the vote begins, and that means that the stakeholders that are voting are going to say yes, no, maybe, right? Whatever answer the question is that, that they need answered. So, um, and once a vote is made, it is uh, it is permanently recorded in the blockchain. There's no backseas. There's no. It's it's a it's a binding vote. Okay. And then there's a period of time where all these votes are being accumulated, mm -hmm. and then there is a pre-calculated uh, tally uh, end. Where, oh, sorry, end time where the tally is going to be made. And at that point, uh, the code is going to actually um, go into a hold-off period. And what that means is, the vote has passed we are going to activate this a month from now. And the reason for that is, is that you need to give people time to upgrade their software. It, let's say there were no voters, right? And they did not want to upgrade the software, so they did it. So at that point, 
they have lost the boat and there's nothing they can do, so you have to upgrade. But you do want to give them time. You know, if you have a business, yeah. it's complicated to update software. So, so there is a, um, you know, a, 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 a portion of time that's allocated for uh, letting the network mature, then there is the voting period, then there's the hold-off period, and then there's the activation period. Mm -hmm. And those are actually all pre-calculated, so you know when this is going to happen. Right. So the, the second the, the tally is done, you know exactly at what block the hard fork is going to occur. Mm -hmm. and, and again, this all happens on network. There's not a human uh, that does anything at so this point. So is the hard fork always in the future? The hard fork, by definition. So you, you couldn't have a situation like Ethereum where they decide to roll back part of the blockchain? That, so as a stakeholder, I would vote no out of general principle. You mm -hmm. cannot do that. Um, okay. Honestly, in my opinion, that was an existential uh, threat in a, to their ecosystem, but they should have rolled with that. That is unfortunate. It, it was not a great thing, but you cannot do backseats. I, I would not invest my money in a system that can be unilaterally rolled back. Yeah, still still a pretty controversial point even today. It, it really is. And um, yeah, I understand why they did it. It's, again, I, I don't think that there's a right or wrong here. It's just from a trust perspective, you violated that. Yeah. All righty, just moving along from that. And I think uh, Decred is more than just the Decred token, as we mentioned before. You said you were the first system to be able to do an atomic swap. Um, yes, that is mostly right. So we were the ones who originated uh -huh. the tools to do the atomic swaps. So uh -huh. that's where that came from. So atomic swaps have been done in the past, but by people hacking directly on the blockchain mm -hmm. and generating opcodes to do that. Um, so that's why I'm trying to make a little bit of distinction there. Uh -huh. But the way it works, though, is we wrote the software that actually made it possible for everybody. So And what we did is we actually did uh, a, um, an atomic swap with Litecoin. Mm -hmm. So Charlie Lee and one of our guys, uh, they set up the parameters and they basically at that point, uh, you know, let the networks do their thing, right? So once the parameters both agreed on both on both blockchains, mm -hmm. the swap happened. Right. So, and since we have added, I want to say that six or seven coins that have shown up. Okay, for example. Uh, Vertcoin was on there. Uh, Zerocoin mm -hmm. was uh, one of the ones that showed up. And, and the way this actually works is since it's all our code, um, typically the projects you know, send us code saying, hey, would you guys add our coin? We'd love to, right? Okay. And, and the way that works is that it's not just for Decred and, and other currencies, it's for all of them. So now that uh, uh, Zerocoin is in on this, they can actually do atomic stocks with Bitcoin and with Litecoin, right? So all the, the, the ones that are in the system can now work together. And we modified it actually recently, and this is really cool, because we could only do it, you know, uh, tens of coins in, in, you know, literally last week. Uh, and then when the code, when the new version got released, now we can do, I, I want to say like at least 1,300 of them. So we, we changed the, the crypto primitives to a point where we can um, do it even with Ethereum, where we can actually swap uh, value. It's very, very powerful. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like it is. And are you working on any other, any other projects or uh, any other updates to the system that are going to change the way that works in the future? Yes. We, um, so let me start with what I'm not working on, and I'm just going to say uh, to your audience what was happening. So one of the things that we are really serious about that we have just not gotten around to is, um, is privacy. Privacy is a big deal to us. Um, most of us actually came from a relatively privacy-minded uh, technology in the past. So I worked on secure online backups that could not be uh, decoded without your keys. And so I I've always been in that privacy space, if you will. Um, so that is happening, and it's going to be new. It's not something that exists currently today uh, in the ecosystem. So we're, we're going to, I cannot disclose that because we, we want to make sure that it works first, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's actually another thing that Decred does, is we don't announce and then, uh, it, you know, we don't hype and then write code. No, we write code, then show it uh, to the people that, you know, it's done, start using it, please. Right. Um, so that is one of the big things that's going to happen uh, in the near future. The other one that's going to happen is actually our signaling system, or our uh, proposal system. So what the proposal system is going to do is allow community members to come up with ideas and see if they can get funding for them. So for example, you want to go to a conference like we are at today, and it costs money, right? It's mm -hmm. not cheap. So I want to send seven people, I'm going to need a booth, I'm going to need stickers, I'm going to need t-shirts, right? So you write that marketing proposal and, you, uh, and that then gets encoded in, in the system. So and what that will do is it allow the, uh, the stakeholders again to uh, vote on a proposal to disperse the funds. I see. 
So, uh, and more technically speaking, if you, if you want to change one of the consensus rules, what that would mean is um, you create a proposal in a disbursement schedule, let's say uh, 10 decred uh, for six months, right? So it would be for a total of 600 decred. And I, I, I don't know if I did the numbers right here, but um, let's go with 10 and 10, because right. uh, I've been talking for a while now. Um, so let's say 10 decred for 10 months, right? So then 100 decred. Um, and then you would put a schedule behind it. So uh, you're going to put your milestones up and then uh, what you're supposed to achieve. So and then the way it's going to work is um, if the milestones are being hit, then the money gets disbursed over time. And if the milestones aren't hit, it's going to get defunded and then uh, the, the funds no longer flow uh, in the other direction. Mm, I see, right. Right. So and the idea then is that we combine that with the hard fork voting. What you can now do mm -hmm. is it gives us all the bits and pieces that you need to actually create a DAE, a digital autonomous entity, yep. where um, where you can have the community actually rule the entire thing. And what that does is it removes a single individual or a single organization from uh, from the critical path of the development of the, of the coin. And that is, in my opinion, critically important. So there's other projects where it's the, you know, the benevolent dictator that essentially runs it and gets to uh, decide when you fork, when you hard fork, when you hard fork in the past. We've seen that. Yeah. We've seen that, yeah. So we do not want to be in that position. We want to be actively removed from this position. Mm -hmm. um, I want my decred to be, you know, I want decred to be a successful project 10 years from now. So that's what we're trying to set up here. Mm -hmm. We are we, we originated it, we've babied it, right? But it's now getting to maturity and it needs to go on its own, right? That's right. So we're hoping, obviously, that the the stakeholders are like enough what we've done in the past and are going to fund our projects, <laughs> but, but we are going to be beholden to the stakeholders. So, um, and we have accumulated 10% of the block reward since Genesis. So since our dawn of time, and that means that we have a pretty large war chest actually sitting there. Um, right. But we have barely touched it because the way we view it is that's not our money, right? Mm -hmm. So we should not, we are the custodians, but we don't want to be anymore. So once, the DAE is complete, once we get all this done, what we're going to do is actually donate that entire fund to the community. Right. So, um, and then not a single individual, not a single organization is going to rule over uh, over, over the coin. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying to build something here for the future. I want my children to be able to use uh, Decred. Great, yeah. And the way you built out the ecosystem, it, it reminds me a little bit of Dash. Are you taking mm -hmm. any inspiration from them at all, or is it something completely different? Um, so yes and no, really. So the the signaling system is. Um, I'll give them enough credit that we definitely took some ideas, and um, and there's probably even going to be some cross pollination. They they did an amazing job on on their signaling system. Right. What sets us apart from them, though, is that we have that additional system underneath it that does the hard forking mechanism. So in Dash, it's it's literally a wish list. There is no um, there's no hard. Uh, it misses the enforcement piece. So, um, so I think that they did an amazing job. I love the website. They they are just a, a great project. Um, I, I'm a little envious at you know how they run certain things. So, but, but we'll get there. Um, we'll get there, and we'll um, we'll provide additional uh, features that they, they do not have. Okay, great. And uh, on that note, I'll, I'll wrap it up. That was uh, Marco Piragum of Decred. And if, if someone wants to get involved, either as, as a buyer, an investor, user, uh, developer, where should they go? So decred.org is, is really where to start. Um, we have a decred.org, I'm going to say slash community page, and that's where all the email addresses, the Slack channels, the uh, riots, uh, the matrixes, so all the digital uh, methodologies that you can use to you know, come talk to us. We're pretty active on Twitter as well, so any one of those ways will... Uh, you know, you can come come find us, and we'll, we'll talk to anybody. So um, we are a very open community with a lot of folks doing outreach. So if you're interested, just show up on one of those digital media, and you know, we can talk to you. Okay, go and check it out. Thanks a lot for today, and this is John Southurst for BitsOnline.com. See you next time.